Charlie House for 75 years, Charlie Benny? Well, 75 years of meteorology at Penn State. most memorable events were when we uh, had to live on very little money and try to accomplish something. And uh, I recall that uh, Dean Steidel, who was at the time the head of the mineral industries, as it was called then, uh, started a program in geophysics. And it was equally memorable that I had uh, 12 hours of teaching per week, which isn't it's quite unusual nowadays at a university. And uh, of course, we had very few students. I remember my first class, I had only four students. Well, when I came, of course, not only was meteorology as a field less developed than it is now, we also had here at Penn State, in the Department of Mining, uh, very few resources which, on which we could rely to make uh, meteorology grow in the Department of Mining. And then, of course, after the war, with the hiring of some key personnel, uh, both of whom are already retired, Dr. Blackada and Dr. Panofsky, uh, things started to really grow. And uh, the whole direction of the department was determined by the capability of these two men who drew others. And uh, the department really grew by leaps and bounds. When I came here in 1946, it was a, a, a two-man department. Uh, Hans Neuberger was the head of the, of the department, and Frank Stevens, who was a retired commander in the Navy, uh, was the only other professorial rank person. I, I think that the, the advent of television uh, in central Pennsylvania was very important in the development of meteorology at Penn State. Observations of the wind way up in the atmosphere, and that flow aloft goes like this, it comes across like so, and Audrey will probably get caught up in that flow. The main thing will be that the majority of the Channel 10 viewing area today will have widely scattered afternoon and evening thunder showers. Uh, also, in the 50s, uh, the Air Force started sending about 30 officers here each year for three semesters of training to, to become weather officers in the Air Force. Two of those eventually became head of the Air Weather Service and became generals. The other thing that happened was uh, when President Milton Eisenhower came to Penn State, uh, he, uh, his, his brother was President of the United States, some may remember that, uh, Dwight Eisenhower. And uh, Milton, more than anyone ever will know, was a co-president of the United States. He spent every weekend in, in the White House uh, with his brother, m writing speeches and making policy, and traveled frequently back and forth from Penn State to, to, the, to the Washington, D.C. Then when Dwight Eisenhower came here in 19, 18, yeah, 1955, I wasn't here in 1855, uh, in 1955 to speak at commencement, uh, there was a critical weather forecast because they had 40,000 people wanting to see him in the stadium, in the football stadium, give his talk, and it was pouring rain all night. So I was called down and uh, had breakfast, shared a grapefruit with Dwight Eisenhower, and talked about the weather at D-Day and the D-Day forecast, and uh, presented him with a weather map and what uh, the, there'd be a window of a few hours when they could hold commencement outdoors, and uh, everything worked out. Uh, that was good for the meteorology department, the fact that I was sort of the local forecaster and, and got us publicity, and of course the president knew we were here. We assigned our faculty to teach various courses, and I did my best to uh, see that the senior people taught some of the elementary courses of our students. And uh, Hans Panofsky, of course, he was Princeton too, and and agreed with me completely. Uh, I always felt that this was a very important factor in the success of our graduates. Uh, we 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 were able to get some very uh, uh, talented people, and uh, at one point, for example, I think five of the seven 
regional directors of the Weather Service were our graduates. Well, what attracted me to Penn State was Charlie Hostler offered me a job. <laughs> but, uh, Elizabeth and I both thought there were considerable advantages to come to Penn State at that point rather than going back to Madison. And so we did. We expected to stay five years. It turned out to be 46. The coming to Penn State really boiled down to three things. One, its reputation. It clearly was most, one of the most highly regarded departments in the country. Two, the people that were on its faculty, they were so highly thought of scientifically and as good humans with whom to work. And three, location. The Nittany Valley was God's world. But one of the most important groups were the uh, were Rick Anthes, and uh, and we had a lot of uh, work doing development of uh, modeling. Uh, we've we've been a very uh, big contributor to uh, the modeling effort in the United States. The uh, first first numerical model in the world to use. They call the primitive equations or the real equations rather than vorticity equations and balance equations. Uh, went operational at the National Weather Service. It was done by one of our graduates and then one of our faculty members, John Hovermail, uh, on June 6, 1966. And Dr. Hovermail picked that date of 6666 for the first operational model because we would remember it the rest of our lives, and we have. Um, the first, uh, the first large-scale climate model was done at NCAR by Warren Washington, who was a Penn State uh, grad.
From Penn State, this is Weather World. I think uh, whether it's in atmospheric chemistry or physics or numerical modeling or atmospheric dynamics or turbulence or you, you name it, any aspect, I could point to Penn State graduates who, who were strong contributors while they were here, either as graduate students or faculty. The, the Penn State Mesoscale Modeling Group with uh, Nelson Seaman and Tom Warner and Dave Stauffer and MM5 have a, it's been an extraordinary accomplishment, an extraordinary achieve, achievement. Well, MM5 is the most widely used model on the on the planet, I mean, all there is to it. It's operating in 50 countries, and and uh, has been a huge success. Uh, I'm I'm happy to say that the breadth of the department's research and the uh, collaborative spirit remain, and that's been a constant. Uh, what has changed is, is that the breadth of the department's research portfolio has increased as the field's portfolio has increased, so that we are remaining at the frontiers of many areas. Penn State grads, Penn State faculty members have been at the forefront of progress and change in atmospheric science for the last 75 years and uh, presumably will be for the next 75.